in this video I'm going to discuss sterilizing groceries and also other items but sterilizing groceries with an ultraviolet light in your refrigerator why might you want to do this there are general health concerns but the main reason at present would be concerns about getting the SARS-CoV-2 virus the uh, presumed cause of the COVID-19 disease from your groceries how could this happen? Most people are going to grocery stores, usually large ones, because of many of the closures, Safeways and other large grocery stores, and getting items. Fruit, as here on the right, and frequently refrigerated items. Milk, ice cream, all sorts of items, frozen dinners. Refrigerated are particularly of concern because they're usually in refrigeration units like this unit here, which have handles. Everyone grabs the handle. Generally, they aren't cleaned each time someone takes something out of them. Then you go in and you touch not only the item you take out, but frequently other items, the shelves, where many other people are getting their food. And some items like milk are extremely common. So although a Safeway might cover quite a range of space and everybody stays several feet away from one another. People are essentially touching the same handles, the same shelves, the same items. Very large number of people will be touching those same items. Refrigeration units are indoors. They're not exposed to the sun, to ultraviolet light from the sun, which can destroy the viruses and bacteria. They're cool. That coolness and refrigeration and freezers keeps the food intact, it keeps it good and fresh for a long time. In fact, if it's frozen, sometimes it can last for years. Same thing can happen to viruses and bacteria. So any item that you're getting that's been refrigerated or frozen has a particularly high risk that a live viral particle or particles are actually on it. Uh, the risks are obviously somewhat lower at room temperature. The higher the temperature, the more likely the virus will break down. Um, there are studies indicating that the viruses can live even several days on a surface at room temperature. But again, in grocery stores and Amazon warehouses and places that are shipping you food, there are refrigerated items, which are common. We buy refrigerated items and frozen items all the time. And the risk is probably especially high for those items. Therefore, there may well be a significant risk of spread on surfaces. The public health authorities like the CDC in the United States have said contradictory things over the path of the pandemic about how frequent the spread on surfaces is, at times hyping it, at times most recently trying to claim that it's very rare. Uh, somehow, despite all the social distancing and all the other measures, the virus has clearly spread and has spread in states and regions with very heavy lockdowns, such as here in California or even much more so. In fact, many of the statistics suggest that there's not much difference depending on what the policies are, with similar death rates in California and Florida, for example. All of that would tend to indicate spread either on surfaces or aerosol particles in the air, which float in the air. They're tiny. You can't even see them under a microscope. They will go through masks as well as through cracks between the mask and your face. The point is, if there's practically significant surface spread, the main focus of this talk, or practically significant aerosol spread, then in fact, many of the measures will fail as they seem to have. And other measures are necessary and might work such as sterilizing your groceries. Probably many people that are watching this have tried to do this. Now, cleaning supplies, it's very arduous to try to clean something with chemicals. The chemicals themselves are toxic. So is it really a good idea to be trying to scrub down all of your uh, groceries? Now, there is an alternative, which is to use ultraviolet lights to sterilize groceries and other items that you get. You might order online, get from Amazon or another supplier, or get in the store. My first attempt to do this was with sterilizing units for baby bottles. These are about a foot square. You can see them right here. They do do the job. It takes about 11 minutes to sterilize a baby bottle or a, a bottle of milk that you got at the store or uh, various items. They're very small, so it's very cumbersome to actually go through even a small few bags of grocery. And there's a lot of risk in handling the groceries and putting them in these and taking them out that you will actually touch them and get, if there is a viral, uh, viral particles on them that you would get the virus on you. So they're sort of difficult to use, they're cumbersome, and it took me a while to come up with a better solution. It seems kind of silly in retrospect. I guess you don't think of using a refrigerator as a sterilization chamber, but in fact you can. 
on the left, let me use, let me point with my cursor here. This is the ROHS Rose uh, Ultraviolet LED Light. Uh, it is called a corn lamp because it's kind of like a corn on the cob. Each of the small squares is an ultraviolet LED. It generates a UVC light. That UVC uh, light is screened out from the sun by the ozone layer on the Earth, so we never see it on the Earth. It's very potent at destroying bacteria and viruses and uh, other living things, so it's fortunate that it's screened out by the ozone layer. It is used for sterilizing a variety of things. That's what these lights are for. It is used in air purification systems that are used for cleaning viruses and bacteria out of the air. Uh, for example, there are ventilation systems and ultraviolet lights used in tuberculosis wards to destroy the tuberculosis particles in the air. Tuberculosis is a bacteria. It's actually substantially larger than the SARS-CoV-2 virus or most viruses. You can see it under a microscope, but there's strong evidence that it spreads through the air. It's able to float in the air despite its size. It's still quite small, and it acts like a dust particle or a smoke particle, and the virus is probably even more so. Similarly, these things can get on surfaces. Ultraviolet lights can destroy the viruses and bacteria both floating in the air and on surfaces. So here on the right, let me, here we go, we can see the cursor. And I just want to say here's the light that I just showed inside my refrigerator. It's a small to medium sized refrigerator. And this uh, electric power cord actually f isn't a problem. You can close the door and completely and seal it. So the point of this, of course, is that the light, when it's turned on, will bounce off of this white surface, and you can leave it on for a long time. Ultraviolet light is dangerous, so you don't want to be exposed to it any longer than absolutely necessary, if possible, not at all. Uh, so putting it inside of a, a chamber, a sterilizing unit, uh, something like a refrigerator, is really critical to safe use of ultraviolet light. Let me go forward, and I'm going to show, let me put the cursor down here to show you this aluminum foil. So what I did is I put a sheet of aluminum foil on the uh, bottom shelf of my refrigerator. That will reflect the, the um, ultraviolet light that comes down from the light back upwards to hit the bottom of the items put on this tray. So I took a tray, flipped it over. It's a mesh. So there I put on top of the tray the milk. This is a cake, other items I want to, other groceries and other items, it's not just groceries, which I uh, want to sterilize because I want to hit everything. I want to hit the entire surface, so not just the, the tops here, but the bottoms, which you can't necessarily do if it's sitting on the ground here on the, the aluminum foil. So these were already sterilized, so I don't have to worry about them. But then I get new groceries, I put them here or on this shelf here, so the light will bounce back up and hit the entire surface of the object surface of the milk carton, for example, uh, bottles, it will go through, the ultraviolet light will go through the plastic bottles, plastic cases, plastic bags. Now, it can't get inside, but the main risk is that the virus, bacteria, whatever you're concerned about removing, is mainly on the exterior surface. So this is actually the light turned on. Now, as I said, the ultraviolet light is dangerous, so you don't want to look at it or be close to it any longer than absolutely necessary. In future iterations, I'll probably have a way to turn the light on inside the refrigerator when it's closed without ever even looking at it. But right now, I have to look at it very briefly to turn it on. I wear a pair of UV protective goggles when I do this. I wear gloves. Now, I wear gloves as soon as I get the groceries here are typically delivered to my door. I take them inside. I wear these gloves. These are big floppy gloves. I'll explain why I do that. And I, with the gloves on, put everything in the refrigerator, throw out the bags or put the bags in the refrigerator to sterilize them. I wear the gloves the entire time. These are big gloves that reach up to my forearms. Uh, one of them is shown right here. Right here, you can see one of the gloves. When we finish, we put the gloves, which may have the virus, on the exterior surface of the gloves, put them inside the refrigerator to sterilize them as well. Now, these big floppy gloves are easy for me, a single person without anyone helping me, to just quickly get off, just throw them, kind of jerk my hands. I can get them off without much risk of touching the exterior of the gloves with my bare hands, which might transfer the virus to the hands. So I do it with the big gloves. It takes a little getting used to, but I found these are easier to get on and off and handle without accidentally touching the exterior surface of the glove than these tight surgical gloves that you can order. They're these plastic or polyurethane or latex gloves. They're often actually difficult to get completely off without touching the exterior of the glove with your hands. 
I'm not sure what doctors do. Maybe they have a nurse or somebody else help them. Maybe there's some trick I haven't figured out as far as handling the surgical gloves, but these actually appear to work really well for me as someone at home, not in a medical setting. So it's important to wear the gloves to handle the food and items before they're sterilized. Get the gloves into the refrigerator. And also the gloves will help protect your hands and your skin from the ultraviolet light. So the ultraviolet light can damage your eyes, cause eye problems. The ultraviolet light can't burn your skin, of course, for a prolonged exposure. It may cause cancer after a long time, just like sunlight. There's ultraviolet light, not this type of ultraviolet light, but there's ultraviolet light and sun. Now, that can cause problems. It also means the sunlight itself sterilizes surfaces, which is why going outside may actually be safer than huddling in your basement or your apartment worrying about the virus because outside the sun is killing these things very quickly and the sun actually makes us stronger. So once this is set up and the light is on, we close the door and we let it run. I let it run for an hour. That's probably longer than needed. Uh, Most of the things I've read suggest that 15 to 30 minutes or even 11 minutes as with those bottle sterilizers is generally enough. The reason I do it for a long time is because as you can see, while the light is shining directly on some of the exposed surfaces, it's bouncing off the surfaces to hit everything. So to get the things that are in shaded locations, maybe not very well illuminated by the light, I want to run for an hour or something like that to make sure everything inside of here is sterilized. Now, for the most part, this sterilization does not have the toxicity issues of cleaning fluids, substances like that. Now, from what I've read, occasionally ultraviolet light can interact with some plastics or materials and cause some chemical issues. Uh, so we probably try to avoid the plastics, but in general, it's much safer and doesn't have the toxicity issues and just the logistics of trying to scrub down all of these items that you buy. Here, it just goes in the refrigerator, zap it with the ultraviolet light for an hour or something, take it out of the refrigerator, and you're good to go. Now, once you've got it in the refrigerator, the gloves are off, everything like that, the next thing you should probably do is wash your hands. I always wash my hands right after I take the gloves off and the refrigerator's closed and the ultraviolet light. I just go and wash the hands. Why do I do that? There's a lot of studies that show that washing your hands seems to reduce the incidence of various viral infections like influenza. I'm not sure we actually understand why that happens. The likely reason why that happens is that the viruses, bacteria, things are getting into us through our mouth. Either we breathe them in or we eat them, or, you know, we touch somewhere in our face and it goes in through the saliva. Your skin actually has various kinds of defenses against infectious organisms. It has chemicals that actually kill them. And so the point of vulnerability is probably our mouth, and that's probably why washing your hands does seem to work. This is contentious, but if you look closely at a lot of the literature, it turns out a lot of sanitary measures, things that are being promoted, the evidence that they work is actually rather poor, or actually some evidence that they don't work. Uh, There's a lot of I don't know what to call it, hype, propaganda, misinformation, use whatever words you like, Uh, but probably it's a good idea to wash your hands, and I always do this when I finish. So wash your hands carefully, scrub fully, make sure the soap or antiseptic is all over the fingers, palms, etc., and that will increase your safety. Is this guaranteed to work? Of course not. One can come up with a lot of scenarios where the virus will get through, we make mistakes, we're human, but... We live in an imperfect world, and this is probably significantly safer and better than simply taking the groceries from the grocery store or getting it from Amazon. For example, I've been ordering a lot of food from Amazon lately, last couple of months. That got me to think about this more. But the point is, it's very simple. You get the groceries, you take them, open them up, put them in the refrigerator with gloves on, get everything in the base, base of the refrigerator, have the light there. You can have the light set up all the time so it never you never have to have struggle to put it in and zap them for a good long time have aluminum foil on the bottom of the refrigerator to reflect the light back up make sure that level you have a tray or something to raise the items you're refer- you're sterilizing up a couple of inches so they will get the light bouncing back up and hitting the bottom and other surfaces that might, might be shaded or completely obscured if you're for example if you set a milk carton right on the aluminum foil you're not going to be able to sterilize the bottom of the milk carton so you want it raised up a couple inches same way with essentially all other groceries or any other item that you might purchase at a store or you might get delivered to you you have no idea what's going on in one of these shipping warehouses at amazon and you have no real idea what's happening at the store either all you can tell is i picked it up off the shelf maybe somebody else picked up something from the shelf nearby so again get the groceries 
put them in the refrigerator, put the gloves in the refrigerator, zap them for an hour or more with the ultraviolet light, wash your hands after you start, you know, you finished, you put your gloves in the refrigerator, wash your hands, and wait, and they will be sterilized with ultraviolet light technology, which can kill the viruses and bacteria on the surfaces of pretty much anything. So that is, a, in a nutshell, how to sterilize your groceries with an ultraviolet light and your refrigerator. This concludes this video presentation. If you like this video, please click like. Please click subscribe and the notification bell if you would like to receive more content from us. You can avoid internet censorship by subscribing directly to our RSS news feed. Please consider sharing the link by email and on your website or blog, in addition to liking, upvoting, or sharing on increasingly censored, advertising beholden, big company social media. We have encountered such censorship. Mathematical software is developing algorithms and software to automate data analysis, reducing the risks of costly errors, and increasing the predictive power of the results. You can support our work financially by subscribing on our Patreon page, https colon slash slash www.patreon.com slash mathsoft, or scanning the QR code in the lower right corner.